Hi friends. And welcome back to the Wolf Recaps. Today I'm going to explain a movie called Psycho released in the year 1998. The movie starts on a Friday afternoon tryst in a Phoenix hotel with the characters Sam Loomis and Marion Crane, who are cuddling together in a bed after having a satisfactory sex session. Sam Loomis works in a hardware store, is in heavy debt, has divorced his wife, and is now courting Marion Crane. And to please Marion, Sam keeps visiting her from California and then returns back. Marion wants to marry him because she doesn't like paying him a visit during his lunch break just to have sex. Sam discusses his inability to marry due to debts and alimony demands from his previous marriage to his ex-wife. And he asks her to wait until his ex-wife remarries next month so he can at least get rid of the alimony money. Marion then returns to work. And her boss entrusts her with a cash payment of $400,000 from a client to get deposited at the bank. However, Marion's desire to get married to Sam overtakes her. She then decides to steal the money and drive to Sam's home in Fairvale, California, where he owns a hardware store. She falls asleep in her car on the way. Then was awoken by a highway petrol polis. Seeing her nervousness, the sheriff becomes suspicious of her. Marion then hurriedly trades her car for another car. Making both the car dealer and the California Highway Patrol trooper suspicious. Running into bad weather, Marion stops for the night at the Bates Motel, located off the main highway. She then hurriedly enters the motel but finds no one at the reception desk. She then looks around and finds a large house atop a hill overlooking the motel. Inside the house, she notices a woman figure, which assures her of the presence of the owner. She then comes back to her car and honks towards the house. Proprietor Norman Bates then descends and takes her inside then registers Marion under an assumed name she uses. On Marion's demands for food. Norman invites her to dine with him as his house is nearby and the other restaurant is about 10 miles. He then leaves to bring her the food. And in the meanwhile, Marion hides the money by wrapping it in a newspaper and keeping it casually on the side table. So that people will ignore it thinking it's just some random newspaper. Marion then overhears Norman arguing with his mother about her presence. They are arguing so loudly that Marion can hear clearly from her motel window. She then feels bad for Norman, as his mother is accusing him very rudely and badly. Upon returning with a light meal and apologizing for his mother's outbursts, they sit down to have dinner together. Norman discusses his taxidermy hobby, his mother's illness, and how people have their own private trap that they wish to escape from. Marion then feels Norman's loneliness and suggests him take his mother to some other place that is less lonely. However, this doesn't go well with Norman. And he suddenly becomes too much emotional and starts spouting words that make Marion feels. As if she is the rude one to suggest to him such nonsense thoughts. Feeling uncomfortable, Marion makes an excuse of getting up early the next day, then gets up and leaves for her room. Returning to her room, Marion, remorseful of her crime, decides to drive back to Phoenix in the morning and return the stolen money hidden in a newspaper. Norman is now fully aroused and is watching her through a secret hole in the wall. On the other side, totally unaware, Marion is changing her clothes. This further aroused Norman and he masturbates seeing her naked body. As Marion showers, a shadowy figure appears, brutally stabs her to death, and leaves. anguished and horrified upon finding Marion's corpse. Norman cleans up the murder scene, wraps the body in the shower curtain, and places it along with her belongings and the hidden cash in her car, and sinks the car in a swamp near the motel. A week later, Marion's sister Lila arrives at Sam's hardware shop in Fairvale. Tells Sam about the theft, and probes her whereabouts, but he denies her disappearance. Private investigator Milton Arbogast approaches them, saying that he has been hired to retrieve the money. Learning that Marion spent a night at the Bates Motel. He questions Norman, whose nervousness and inconsistency arouse Arbogast's suspicion. When Norman implies Marion had spoken to his mother, Arbogast asks to speak to her, but Norman refuses. Arbogast, not yet suspecting the worst, updates Sam and Lila about his findings, 
and promises to phone again later. When he goes back to the motel again and enters the Bates home looking for Norman's mother. A figure resembling an elderly woman emerges from the bedroom and fatally stabs him. Hearing no word from Arbogast, Sam and Lila grow curious about the Bates Motel, Arbogast's last stop. The pair later visit El Chambers, the local sheriff, who tells them that Norman's mother died in a murder-suicide ten years earlier. Concluding that Arbogast lied to Sam and Lila so he could pursue Marion and the money. Convinced that something happened to Arbogast, Lila and Sam drive to the motel. Check in while posing as a married couple, and infiltrate Marion's room. Finding a missing shower curtain and a scrap of paper indicating that Marion subtracted an amount from her cash payment. Sam distracts Norman in the office, while Lila sneaks into the house. Suspicious, Norman becomes agitated and knocks Sam unconscious. As he runs to the house, Lila hides in the fruit cellar, where she discovers the mother's mummified body. She screams, and Norman, wearing his mother's clothes and a wig, enters the cellar and tries to stab her. Sam appears and subdues him, rescuing Lila. At the police station, psychiatrist Dr. Simon Richmond explains that Norman and his mother used to live together alone for so many years. However, when her mother's boyfriend appears, Norman grew jealous and killed his mother and her lover by poisoning them, with strychnine ten years earlier. He mummified her corpse and began treating it as if she were still alive. Even going so far as to recreate her in his mind as an alternate personality, as jealous and possessive as she was while alive. And as per Norman's split personality disorder when Norman is attracted to a woman, the personality of mother takes over. He had murdered two other young women before Marion, and Arbogast was killed to hide his mother's crime. Dr. Richmond concludes mother has now completely taken over Norman's personality. Sitting in a jail cell, Norman hears his mother saying in his mind that the murders were all his doing. The movie ends with Marion's car being retrieved from the swamp. That was all for the explanation. I hope you liked it. Please leave a like to help our channel grow. Don't forget to subscribe and leave your view on this movie. Thank you for watching.